Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 14th episode of the Superintendent Spotlight. Today, we're going to talk about special education in the Hingham Public Schools and, and related uh, topics, including uh, information about the Parent Advisory uh, Council that we have called CPAC, and also one of the, the newest offerings we have in the Hingham Public Schools, and that is the uh, Social SNAP program. That's very exciting, and I know you're going to enjoy that. Uh, as we're chatting today uh, with the guests, you will be seeing some uh, video clips playing in the background, and we'll talk about that a bit more, particularly in the second uh, segment. So we, we will have two segments today, and the guests in this segment are on my right, uh, Liz Flynn. Liz is our Director of Student Services. And the Student Services role includes special education, but also English language learning and uh, a number of other uh, services that we provide uh, to support student learning in our schools. Uh, and also uh, on my left are the two co-chairs of our Hingham Special Education Parent Advisory Council, and they are Diane DiNapoli and Nate Rant. So welcome to you. you. I'm going to start with Liz just to uh, give us some background, mostly, mostly figures uh, about um, uh, special ed in our district. Hingham at the moment has about nearly 4,400 students that we're responsible for uh, being educated every day. And of that number, oh, about 4,250 or 60 are educated in our schools every day. And those students are children um, within the uh, typical population and, and uh, a large number, the largest number actually of students that we have that have special needs. But in addition to that, uh, K to 12 program. We also have an integrated preschool program. It runs out of East School, and that program has um, about 70 students at any one time. Children enter as they turn three, and some of those are typical children whose parents pay a tuition for that program, and the others are, are, are ch children with some significant challenges uh, and around which the program is built. And then we, we always have about 50 or so students that are educated outside the district in uh, collaborative programs or private uh, special education settings. And we have a small number of students, only two or three, they're in a vocational program. So that's the background. Um, so I'd like to ask Liz to talk a little bit about the kinds of programs that we have in-house that serve those, uh, those youngsters. So there's a, there's a list of them. Um, and of course, the big thing to remember that is that every child's plan, individual plan, is an individual one. So, so sometimes we are able to group students for services and sometimes they're unique to the child. So what do we have in-house for programs? In-house we have for the vast uh, majority of our students are um, uh, different depending on the level. So we have students who come to us, as you said, when they are turning three years old. We have a preschool program which has two components. It has an integrated component where the um, neurotypical students who come in for tuition will be placed with students that have um, individual education program needs and receive special ed services. In that we also have an intensive skills program for students who need uh, more intensive skill development, readiness for school, um, helping st young students become learners, knowing the classroom routine and, and those sort of early childhood curriculum, um, curriculum needs. As the students move up, and, and I'll speak generally of the uh, more intensive programs first, uh, we have an intensive skills one and two program. The first one is a K-1-2 multi-graded class that is uh, also housed at East Elementary School with the preschool that has a small number of its students with um, you know, intensive adult support that are working on continuing those intensive skills, uh, skill building and readiness for students while working um, alongside their uh, equivalent either K-1 or 2 classroom so that those students can be you know, included and integrated with their typically um, aged peers as is appropriate for that, the individual student. Uh, from there, that program continues on through um, a 3-4-5 multi-graded class, which is new this year we have started, and that is housed at the South Elementary School. So it's a similar um, student population. The students, students need uh, more intensive and um, individualized skill improvement and access to the curriculum. Um, the students then move on to the middle school and we have a comprehensive array of um, secondary programs in, in terms of 
Uh, the middle school, we have a six, seven, eight. Then we go on to the high school where we have two components of the same um, intensive program, a nine to 12 where students are working um, on completing their MCAS requirements. And then they have um, a, a special population which is focused on transitional skills, post-secondary um, post readiness, um, pre-vocational and vocational opportunities within the community and also within the school. Now the middle school is... And those children can go up to age 22 yes, in that population. Yes. Under the, the state and federal law, the students would have eligibility until their 22nd birthday. So they're with us and a part of the, the school community um, right up through their 22nd birthday. Now I just want to say the middle school also has um, a 6, 7, and 8 component where the children are working on um, more advanced skills. They're working on uh, communication, social skills development, um, and they have, depending on the student's need, will have opportunity for small group intensive skill instruction, and then um, depending on their level of readiness for uh, different inclusion opportunities. And that could be um, in any academic need, depending on their strengths. Um, and of course, as much social activity um, as, as is appropriate. Mm -hmm. Is there right? yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, we have a fairly large student services department. I, I, I always tell folks that, uh, that Liz has one of the biggest departments. We tend to think of special ed as a department, not unlike math or science or social studies, but really the numbers of folks in that department are, are, are challenging to, to even keep track of, let alone, uh, let alone manage. But we have special education teachers in each of the buildings at the elementary level, at the middle school and the high school. And then we have psychologist chairs, uh, we call them, uh, folks who, who uh, organize the, the planning efforts and, and uh, often will run the team meetings. Um, and then we have the various kinds of therapists and specialists, uh, occupational uh, and physical therapy, uh, speech and language uh, services, um, what the uh, ABA support. Uh, support. Um, and so it's quite an array. And as well, for those things that are perhaps low incidence, we, uh, we also contract out for services. Uh, the former employees are, are all Hingham employees, but we contract out for those services. So it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of staffing. Um, I'm aware that there are some old kind of over overriding themes. While every child has a unique uh, plan, um, there are some overriding themes like um, learning in the least restrictive environment and, and some others. Can you talk a bit about what some of the big ideas are as uh, individual plans are, are written and, and student needs are considered? Sure. Yeah. So le let me maybe talk about the, um, the array of services because mm -hmm. we do have um, close to 600 students on IEPs and that includes students with very varying needs. So a student on an IEP could be just seeing the speech pathologist once a week and that is, that is you know, a full IEP or the student may be in a, um, a partial inclusion program or a full inclusion program. So um, there is an array, as you said, of, of services available which are appropriate for each student as determined by the team. Um, <clears throat> and some overarching themes in terms of least restrictive. So um, not only Hingham, but all uh, Massachusetts and uh, it's a federal law that the school districts are required to educate students in the least restrictive educational environment. So that means what class they would be in uh, as their neuro neurotypical same-aged peers. So we try to keep those students as close to that grade level um, classroom as is appropriate for them to be able to make progress and access the mm -hmm. curriculum and be able to move forward as, um, as a student. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of uh, related service providers, uh, we do we have um, in-house speech and uh, speech language pathologists. We have occupational therapists. We actually contract out for our physical therapist. Uh, we have a host of ABA um, services for home and school. Many and ABA for our non is applied community. applied behavioral analysis. Mm -hmm. It's a behavioral support, um, and we have a number of vision services, um, orientation and mobility services for some of those lesser um, common disabilities that we do, uh, we, we try to contract out through our local collaborative of which we are a part of. Mm -hmm. um, 
Okay, and certainly I know right now, for example, we're working on some guidelines. We're always looking to, to improve what we can offer and also to be sure that what we offer from one building to the next, particularly at the elementary level, is consistent in terms of services. So I know this year there's been a project that's, that's ongoing, uh, looking particularly at um, uh, children who need more individualized um, support during the day, paraeducative support, and to develop some guidelines and, and try to make those consistent as we look from building to building. Absolutely, and that ties into the theme of LRE, least restrictive environment, is there's a, you know, it's always a hard balance to provide intensive, um, you know, adult support for students, but at some points many students can become dependent on those, ch on those adults, so we try to maximize the student independence and self-advocacy, so it is uh, Particularly always a, as they grow older. Absolutely. So it, we're always in the team meetings looking at, um, looking at that. And I know transitions are always a big concern, particularly to parents as children move uh, from preschool into the uh, K to, to five program and then from um, five to six and eight to nine. So what kinds of things do we do there to uh, be sure that transitions are, are smooth and orderly? And um, I think that the, um, the preschool uh, really does a great job of getting those kindergarten students out into the various schools when they're turning in terms of the the first natural transition. Um, they meet with the team chairs, they pass along the records, they have conversations about um, the students and their um, their IEP needs, their you know maybe sort mm -hmm. of likes and dislikes that aren't evident from the, the four corners of the IEP. There's also opportunities for staff to come in and observe the students mm -hmm. and to have a conversation with families as well. Mm -hmm. um, this year, one of my goals is to really streamline that elementary, elementary to middle school mm -hmm. transition, which is always seems to be very um, you know, concerning and, and a scary transition mm -hmm. going from that more nurturing elementary to the middle school, which is, you know, has higher academic demands and more rigor and you know, transitions, and it's a bigger, beautiful building. Um, so this year we've planned mm -hmm. a number of events to help help ease that transition. You get started on that earlier. Absolutely. Year as well, well, we're actually funny that you say that we're starting that this week. We have um, our elementary fifth grade special ed teachers, along with our uh, psychologist school chairs, uh, going to a transition day at the middle school on the 14th. Mm -hmm. This is just for internal staff to kind of uh, let them see the the various services and classrooms and offerings that the middle school has to really sort of. Um, help ease that sort of any tension that might exist in terms of mm -hmm. getting the students into like that middle school mindset. Mm -hmm. um, from there, I know the middle school has a number of, um, of parent, uh, they have a parent night and we're going to add on to that as we did I think in a, a past, um, past years and maybe we can uh, co-sponsor with the CPAC um, having a, a, a component of that evening be for special ed students mm -hmm. so that there will be um, I would like to have the school psychologist teams ch chairs there and the middle school as well so there can really be a, you know, a bridge in terms of moving students up. Okay. And uh, there are uh, many, many questions that you have, uh, just general questions about scheduling and mm -hmm. what the middle school looks like, how it differs from, um, from the elementary and whatnot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think we do, the same, um, we do the same thing, but maybe it's a little bit different because the freshmen, when they move up from eighth to ninth, have uh, a freshman orientation week and it's a little more um, structured even from like the regular ed standpoint mm -hmm. so we do have the same kind of conversations meetings parent involvement of students moving up from eight to nine right right okay so let's talk about uh, CPAC so um, since 1986 or 87 the law has required in Massachusetts that um, there be uh, special education parent advisory councils uh, in all schools, and there are some guidelines actually. In fact, there's a handbook mm -hmm. that talks about how you get to be on uh, through election process on, on the CPAC and, and what some of the roles and intents of that are, but of course every town has a CPAC that's unique. So tell us about how uh, the Hingham CPAC is organized. You're the co-chairs, and then what other kind of structure? Is there a board, and, and how does that work? Yeah. Um, my name is Diane Zanapoli, and mm -hmm. I'm one of the co-chairs of the CPAC this year. It's a great honor to serve with Nate and Linda and Kate. Um, we were a new board this year, um, so we really had the opportunity to, um, uh, to reassess and mm -hmm. work and develop partnerships. Um, we realized, I think, after the first meeting that 
um, one of the large needs we felt was for social and emotional support. And mm -hmm. obviously the school, this has been one of your the top goal, goals. Goal for us and this we've year met well. exactly. And I think that is um, across all students, not just the special needs population. So we've had a great opportunity to meet you know, with wonderful partners like the school administration, have conversations with SNAP, um, kind of again strengthen that relationship, meet with principals, parents, and, and really just there's a tremendous need across the board and tremendous support in Hingham. I, I think Hingham is um, very ahead in many ways of their offerings, not just from a school's point of view, support, SNAP. Um, you have everyone from selectmen to police officers who want to work and will work hands-on with children with special needs, and uh, it, it really is wonderful to be in the town. A little bit more about the CPAC board um, and how we're organized. So in addition to myself and, and uh, Diane and our treasurer and secretary, um, we have liaisons that are part of our committee and liaise with every single one of the Hingham schools. Um, we have different parents that come to us with different strengths and, and, and uh, interests. Mm -hmm. And what we, we tell the community is think of the CPAC as a platform for you to come and take something special or an idea and use it as a platform to, to bring special ideas, services, um, structure to the special education community. Mm -hmm. And so you meet monthly, is that how it works? And yep. uh, We meet uh, the third Monday of every month, mm -hmm. um, typically in the um, town library. Mm -hmm. um, we do ask that um, on occasion Mondays aren't optimal because uh, we, a lot of holidays fall on Mondays. Mm -hmm. um, but if you stay tuned to our website, which is uh, hinghamcpac.org, um, you will be able to see every time we meet during the month. Mm -hmm. And so you do have an, uh, a uh, website, and you also have a newsletter that goes out periodically. So you have a number of activities, and some of them uh, it seem to me to fall into two categories, activities that support children uh, directly or involve children, and then those activities that are a little bit uh, more supportive of, of adults and, the, and right. the challenges of being an adult who's a parent of a child with special needs. So talk about some of the activities you have going on this year. Um, well again, kind of following on the year of friendship, we really wanted to focus on finding like-minded parents and then working with all parents in the school district. Um, and, I, and we realize that need for social and emotional support mm -hmm. is for all parents. It's a very tough job being a parent and it's perhaps a little harder when you have mm -hmm. a child with unique needs. Mm -hmm. um, so this year we've uh, had a great speaker, Katie Shamitz, come uh, talk about mm -hmm. friendship and the room was packed because we feel again every parent and child struggles with friendship. Um, we've had some great socials. Well, I'm yes. going to interrupt you just to yeah. comment for our audience that um, that um, particular meeting was uh, taped by yep. HCAM and is available on YouTube. Yes. And so if you go to the uh, the HCAM uh, website, you can see all the things that are available. So we would really encourage people to see that because I it was fascinating. It, it's great. She's a great she's speaker. Energetic she's energetic. She's and, uh, energetic. She's comical and she's a parent and she gets it and she works with these children and the families every day. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really what we were looking for this year. People who really were in the trenches and worked with the children like you do, like mm -hmm. we do every day. Mm -hmm. um, our next big event is on February 4th. It's going to be the Shut Up Sisters. Mm -hmm. um, and they are great. They're Massachusetts-based women who have two children with unique needs mm -hmm. and do sort of a comedic look at mm -hmm. being a parent with children with special needs, kind of addressing some of the stigmas that go with having a child with special needs and as they mm -hmm. call their um, movement towards imperfection. And I think, <laughs> especially in a town like Hingham, mm -hmm. it's important to step back and look at all the blessings we have and realize that no child is perfect mm -hmm. and we need to celebrate every child in our town. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd, I'd add that, um, you know, speaking to the year of friendship that Diane touched on, you know, as a new board that came together over the summer, we thought about what, what could help kind of qualify what we pursue this year and, and potentially next, and what mission could kind of frame that. Um, so we're pursuing everything uh, with the guise of the Year of Friendship. Um, and we feel like the Year of Friendship not only is reflective of what we want to do for our students, but also us as a committee. So one of the things that we've really made a point of is how do we partner with various organizations across town and deliver our um, uh, advisory and informational events um, along with some of these partners. Um, and obviously the administration is one of our most important partners. And We've already put events on to uh, explain to parents uh, what their rights and responsibilities are mm -hmm. um, as parents with special needs students. And that's an annual uh, yes. that activity. That that's an annual activity. And um, this spring, we're planning on putting on an event, again, with uh, Liz um, to talk about the um, extended school year and help parents understand more about uh, that program mm -hmm. that the Hingham schools provide. 
Um, another uh, aspect that we feel very passionately around is um, the social and emotional health of, of students these days. Um, and we're planning to bring in Dr. Naja Riley, who is an author of a kind of proclaimed book, um, and she resides in Massachusetts. We're planning to bring her in the April time frame um, so that parents and teachers and administration mm -hmm. can come and hear and gain awareness mm -hmm. around uh, the social and emotional needs of students today. And as the, was mentioned earlier, that is one of the goals that, uh, that I have uh, and Ellen Keene, the assistant superintendent, have for this year. Um, and we're uh, focusing on that same topic through our leadership team, which is the team of all of the, uh, the principals, assistant principals, directors, resource people, a group of about 34 people. And that's our major focus, professional development uh, this year. So, and we, so we appreciate uh, having that opportunity. We'd say also that uh, we have a special education subcommittee of the school committee, uh, and we don't meet often, but several times a year. Uh, we'll be having a meeting coming up fairly soon to talk about the budget, because mm -hmm. uh, we're in that season. Um, but uh, we have also a, um, a warrant article coming up in town meeting that hopefully uh, will allow us to put some additional money in a in a fund, a reserve fund that we set up a year or so ago um, that's there to support um, uh, tuitions and or transportation um, for students that, that we don't anticipate are coming and all of a sudden uh, are in our district and we need to provide for them. So, so a lot of things are going on at that level as well. And I and, would uh, like to thank the people of the town and the administration. I think often people look at a huge number and don't understand uh, mm -hmm. some of the needs that a special needs what child, what they receive in Hingham that they may not in another town, mm -hmm. and the benefits. And I've seen with my own children, the support they get, it is worth it. Mm -hmm. I mean, my son just took the third grade MCAS and did very well. Good. And I think if he didn't have the academic and emotional support, he might not have. So mm -hmm. I, I, I can attest that it is money well spent. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, we have an all-town PTO I meet um, monthly mm -hmm. with a group of uh, uh, representatives from each of the PTOs. Often, it's the president of the PTO. But also mm -hmm. sitting on that group with the building representatives uh, are Diane, who's representing CPAC, and also um, a member of our uh, Hingham Education Foundation. Right. Because they're certainly major players. And that is team, one of the, so. uh, excuse me, sorry, that's one of the partners this year that we're really looking to um, to work closely with HEF as well as SNAP and other um, other groups mm -hmm. in the town. Perhaps next year we're looking at putting a series together, a lectures <coughs> with HEF. Yes, we've had some um, discussions about it. And that. yeah, I think that'll be wonderful. Again, it's right. just um, there's so much to do, and the need is so severe um, for special needs children that we are looking to partner with mm -hmm. anyone who wants to help. Right. Um, so Nate, how, how do parents uh, become aware, first of all, of your existence and how did they get involved? Um, sure. Um, well, I'd uh, encourage people to come to a meeting um, just to learn a little bit more. Um, go to our website. There's a lot of great information and knowledge out there, resources. Um, I'd also think about special ed um, not as um, uh, not for individuals who have physical and, and, and visible disabilities, mm -hmm. but what we're finding today is a majority of the challenges that um, these individuals face are invisible um, mm -hmm. to the common public. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, y you know, one thing that I reflect on as a community with a lot of resources is we all should be proud about the great academic um, uh, the great academics that Hingham has, uh, the great athletics that Hingham has. Um, but I I it's also important to provide for that social, emotional um, um, uh, necessity that um, um, and training mm -hmm. that um, all students need, um, not just those that we think mm -hmm. are special ed. And uh, you know, it's through the partnerships that we've been speaking about and with the administration mm -hmm. that really what we're trying to provide is a structure to help all students, not just those that might be special ed, but any student that might need just a little bit of help with forming a social relationship or a little bit of help um, um, getting a little bit more skills mm -hmm. in areas that they weren't born with. Right. And on that front, moving forward, perhaps in the next year, one of the CPAC's goals is to work with employers in the community mm -hmm. and look at um, transition and life beyond age 22 is very critical mm -hmm. and I think we can help and the school does a great job but then they're often handed off to a cold world that's not so inviting mm -hmm. so I think that's a, that's something we'd like to work with any employee out there who's looking for a great person a great mm -hmm. um, asset to their company and our, our community broader community even 
a bit beyond Hingham has been very supportive. Yes, of, there are certain places like Hannaford's, mm -hmm. I think the YMCA mm -hmm. that come to mind that are... In town Hall, we have a young man at Town Hall. Yes. Here at the Mail. Right, uh, I think people are... a terrific job. Yeah, uh, and I, but I think people are surprised how wonderful and dedicated and able these individuals are. Um, mm -hmm. And so we have to help make them understand what great people that we have produced in this town from the school right. and parents. And you know, you mentioned uh, the, the education. Of course, we, we think it's a really strong academic program and we strive for excellence, but, but our job as educators is really about not just providing services and budget and all those things. It's really about access mm -hmm. for all children, whether they have disabilities or not, uh, whether they have uh, social needs or, or not, um, access to the program, to the academic program, access to activities, mm -hmm and all the richness that, uh, that, that can be found here and in most other public school systems as well. Um, Liz, you have worked in other places, and um, so in particular, as you look at uh, CPAC uh, and the PAC in Hingham, what, what do you think is unique about our PAC, and how does it really enrich what we're all trying to do every day in terms of providing access? I think our Hingham CPAC is exactly um, what was designed when, when the state mandated those CPAC um, school district um, partnership that CPACs exist because uh, we have, as you can see, two very collaborative people who have a lot of good ideas and are very motivated to work together for the betterment of the students, of all students, not just students with disabilities. And when the schools and the parents can partner together like this, it really does improve student outcomes across the board, be it socially, um, be it academically, um, we really, it really is child-centered and about the children. So you, you can see we've got two great people and, and many districts struggle even putting together, holding together a, a CPAC from year to year and um, Hingham uniquely has a very, um, a very dedicated and um, you know, robust mm -hmm. CPAC leadership. And we're grateful and thankful to you for okay. that as well. Yeah. And speaking of the two great people we have, so you each spend a lot of time. I mean, you <laughs> have children that uh, have their education and their activities, and um, but you spend a lot of time on this on behalf of your kids, sure, certainly, but everybody else's kids as well. So I'd like each of you to just tell us what it is that um, kind of motivates you to do this important work. Do you want to go first? <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I mean, for me, just, um, you know, what I, what I think about is I, I see my children go out and, um, you know, whether it be hockey coaches or, 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 or hockey players or, or, or um, soccer players, um, and, and just I'm using sports as an example. But um, some of these students um, who are leaders in, in, in our, um, our schools are coming out and helping other students who probably won't be uh, the captain of, of one of the teams. Um, and what you're taking is you're taking um, a, a, a huge strength and an asset within the community and helping uh, bring up maybe the strength and the asset that another person won't have. Mm -hmm. um, for me, as I take a step back and I look at that, um, I think of our community as a fabric and each stitching um, has mm -hmm. to have a certain strength to it. And as you take a lot of those threads and you weave them together, really um, our community is a reflection of that fabric. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's beautiful when you see you know, somebody who's strong in one area help another student out or individual out who isn't strong in that area. Okay. Well, yeah. what? I, I just think it goes back to being a parent is a tough job without any training. And when you find you have a child with special needs, it can be very overwhelming. A lot of people will give you anecdotal advice but <laughs> not real moms that, or dads that you can call and say have you had this do you experience this so I think the bond between parents this is our tribe mm -hmm. and we need to understand how to best represent it and be part of everything about Hingham whether it be the parade or the St. Patrick's Day party that's coming up I think again we need to be mm -hmm. out there and it really is an honor and I've learned a lot this year serving on All Town PTO and working with parents so hope to continue that. Great. Well, thank you both very much. Thank you. I want you. to thank all three of you because we're going to conclude this segment now, uh, take a quick break, and then we'll be back to talk about uh, SNAP. And SNAP is the exciting new player, I yeah. guess we would say. Uh, uh, and we'll have two guests here to have that discussion. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Today we're discussing 
the special education program in Hingham and some of the related activities. Uh, in our last segment, we talked a little bit about the program in general, the numbers of students served, and, uh, and we also talked about CPAC, the, the Special Education Parent Advisory Council that's so active in, in our community. In this segment, we're gonna uh, talk about a particular, fairly new project, uh, and it's called SNAP. And I'll introduce my two guests and, and we'll tell you what SNAP means. Uh, but I have two guests here. One uh, is Warren Pulisier, uh directly on my left. And Warren is, uh, is from the Sports Partnership originally, but now is kind of the dad, I guess, of, of <laughs> SNAP. So he'll tell, uh, talk about that. And then we have Kerry Nee. And Kerry is one of our uh, parents uh, in, in town with children with special needs. But Kerry is also on the board as a liaison for South Elementary School mm -hmm. as well. So um, with respect to that, let's get right to, uh, to it. So kind of tell us, walk us through how SNAP came about. Where did the idea come from? And what is the role that the sports partnership has played in that? Um, well, first of all, Dr. Gallo, I'm uh, very honored to, uh, to be here with you, and thank you for the support that you've given um, to both the sports partnership as well as, uh, as SNAP. Uh, SNAP, um, I'll go back to the sports partnership. I was lucky enough to be on the sports partnership for a number of years and actually president <coughs> for a number of years as well, and got a chance to see a lot of the athletic programs that are provided to the town and the way that our families take advantage of those um, athletic pro programs. Um, and it, it was actually um, someone that suggested that I get onto the board of uh, HSP a long time ago, the late great uh, Will McDonough mm -hmm. um, had said, um, look for the, the people that don't have. Um, he uh, started the sports partnership because there were no uh, female sports in town. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the, he went out to a community that didn't have anything really. And the longer that I spent uh, at HSP, the more I understood that there was a community that was not only underserved, but not served at all. And it, it was a special needs um, community. And I got a chance to, to sit down and, and speak with, um, with CPAC at mm -hmm. the time, uh, Marissa mm -hmm. um, and, um, and Donna. Uh, and we got a chance to talk about the things that, that they do and what they don't do. And they were, they were driving um, to New Hampshire and to Rhode Island for mm -hmm. a single program here and there. And I thought, that's just, that's crazy. These mm -hmm. kids deserve more. Um, so what I, I wanted to be able to do is to um, sort of outline um, the, the goals of what a, a special needs athletic uh, program would look like and did so, spoke to a number of people including you, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Gallo and um, others, and uh, wanted to make it evergreen. Um, mm -hmm. So it would not just be a, a one sport, one time hit or miss. Um, but something that would be more um, everlasting. Um, so uh, right from the start, we decided to mirror a lot of what the sports partnership had done in creating a 501c3 mm -hmm. nonprofit, uh, making sure that, um, that we had a board that was sustainable and evergreen that would, be, that would have a mix of the community, both you know, from a political side, from a uh, school department side, one of our board members is actually the liaison to CPAC. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and also people that, that have access in the community. So um, that was the idea. Um, we got uh, our first partner mm -hmm. uh, was our crew program and, and Doug McKaig um, put together the very first program that we, uh, we offered. and. Um, success happened mm -hmm. from there. And that happened very quickly in the spring of a season when uh, the idea wasn't yet fully developed. But uh, I, it, if you know me at all, none mm -hmm. of the ideas are fully developed. <laughs> uh, the, the development happened um, you know, through partnerships and I think that what, what I understood being part of, the, of HSP, um, that last P is very important um, in that 
that it's you can't do it all yourself. Yeah. It's other people that want to uh, want to give of their time and their efforts. And what we found, um, uh, not uh, probably uh, no news to you, but um, Hingham is a tremendous giving community, yeah. and they reached out to us before we reached out to them, and mm -hmm. it did happen very quickly. We went from um, from the establishment of a, a board to our first program in less than 45 days. Wow. And you, uh, you focused on the P in SNAP, and I want to focus a little bit on the A in SNAP, because <laughs> the, the word athletic is in there. But it, it seems to me that as I look at uh, the program as it's evolving, uh, there are a lot of big ideas even beyond the athletics and, and, and goals embedded in those uh, ideas. So from your perspective, what are the other goals besides simple participation in an athletic endeavor that are so important? It's a, a good point. Um, the, um, as, as I um, understood what the needs were in Hingham through the sports partnership and what um, athletics does bring to the town, um, a lot of things I take for granted um, uh, actually happen through this program. So um, I think of athletics and think of teams mm -hmm. um, in how people come together and work together um, to have a team. Um, and that's, there's a tremendous amount of social networking, mm -hmm. um, both from um, the student mm -hmm. as well as the parents. Mm -hmm. um, and we added um, something new which was needed in this program and that were a group of mentors. A mm -hmm. uh, group of our 16 uh, and older um, members of our, our high school. Um, we provided mentors to all the uh, students that need mentors, one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two, one-on-three, mm -hmm. whatever the number would be. And cheerleaders uh, in some cases. And cheerleaders yeah. as yeah. well. Uh, I mean, so that the, they, uh, a lot of them did act exactly as mm -hmm. cheerleaders. So um, I guess the, the, uh, the results were a lot different than what I thought it was going to be. I thought the athletics uh, would be a great aspect because they were denied the opportunity to be in programs that I think they would like to have been in. Um, but what I realized is that it's more the social interaction and the ability to work with some of their peers. Mm -hmm. um, and that is kind of um, overrun itself now where um, uh, a lot of the special needs kids um, would sit in the cafeteria, have their lunch by themselves at their own table. Now they're sitting with uh, mentors. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think that that's a tremendous, it's tremendous both for the, the children mm -hmm. um, as well as it is for the mentor. I think the mentor gets more out of it than mm -hmm. the, the uh, special needs and child. Probably more than they thought they would get. A lot more care. than what they thought. <laughs> right, right, thank you very much. Um, so the program's been in effect now for two full years. Well, yes. this is the second full year uh, with lots of activities going on. And so, um, so as you look back um, on this, has it uh, evolved in the way that you imagined or uh, what? Well, um, I, I guess I in a way, yes, in a way, no. Um, the yes is that um, I wanted to make sure that our program, uh, that, that the, the children had choices and it wasn't mm -hmm. just one sport per season uh, or one activity per season. And so now we have multiple activities from, mm -hmm. from hockey to, to dance to yoga to um, tennis, uh, uh, bowling. Um, we've got a, a new uh, baseball program that we're, we're starting out, baseball and softball. We've got a new uh, basketball program that we're also starting. So there's plenty of choices uh, mm -hmm. for the kids, and that was a goal, uh, so that we'd have that, and we'd consistently use other partners to help us out with those programs. The thing that I really didn't understand um, and was quite a surprise, again, is the, the, um, the, the way that the community has uh, really included us as part of, uh, of a part of the community. Um, they really have reached out to say, 
we have an idea. We've got a program we'd like to put together. We'd like to do this for you. We'd like to do that for you. And also the parents. Um, and I think that the parents needed an outlet um, mm -hmm. that wasn't strictly educational mm -hmm. um, and more social. Um, mm -hmm. So that has been provided to them. And I think that, um, that that's been far exceeded my expectations. Far exceeded, yeah. I thought you would say that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to ask uh, Carrie to talk in uh, a little more detail about some of the programs. And uh, why don't you just talk, Carrie, talking about the, the program that we have that connects with our summer program uh, that so many of our, our uh, children with special needs attend. It's called ESY, but Extended Year Program. But So we had something special uh, in mind there. Well, shortly after uh, we had our first SNAP board meeting, we had a public forum to try to talk to parents and see what they wanted. And one of the first things of feedback we got was that they wanted some kind of camp for kids. Because there are a number of kids on, in Hingham on IEPs that do the extended school year in the mm -hmm. summer to prevent regression. Mm -hmm. And that runs Monday through Thursday, 9 to 12, in the, pretty much the month of July. It's about mm -hmm. five weeks. Mm -hmm. And it put parents in a tough position because a lot of the camps that are available through the REC and the Y are, um, are full day camps. Mm -hmm. So if you send your child to, um, to ESY, you can't take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. And then there's really not much for them to do in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So uh, we worked with the South Shore Country Club and um, Warren was great with setting that up. And they have a great facility there with uh, golf and tennis and bowling and they have a pool. And we tried that. And so the children would finish their ESY program at noon mm -hmm. and then come over to the country club and come until four mm -hmm. and try all of these ac activities. And I know I have two children with special needs who had none, never done any of those things mm -hmm. before. So it was, mm -hmm. it was a great opportunity. And after that first year, a lot of the feedback we got is, this is great, but it would be really good if there was transportation mm -hmm. between ESY and the summer program. Right. And you were wonderful with helping mm -hmm. us set that up. And mm -hmm. the children got, uh, were transported over. They would you do their academics in the morning, come over, eat lunch, and then try all of the programs. And mm -hmm. it was great. They got social activity. They got mm -hmm. to try out tennis. Um, some were more, it, the children we get are, it's a, some need a lot of support. Some are actually very athletic, and mm -hmm. we uh, because a lot of our mentors play tennis and mm -hmm. golf, um, we could accommodate all of them. Right. So well, that's great. Yeah. So then, uh, during the school year, would you typically have three seasons of uh, activities? We go pretty much all year round. Um, mm -hmm. Over the the past holidays, we mm -hmm. kind of took a break, but. Um, right now we have uh, our ongoing programs. We usually have a bowling program running, an adapted mm -hmm. dance program, um, a yoga program, and we are also starting a basketball program and mm -hmm. with at Notre Dame, followed mm -hmm. by an hour of fun and games. So these are the games that kids would play during gym and during mm -hmm. recess, but kind of more laid back mm -hmm. and um, slowed down a little bit, and mm -hmm. you can work on the skills. One thing about that's nice about developing these new programs is that you can do what the child needs. Mm -hmm. So if, if a child is really athletic and wants to play on teams, you can set that up. And mm -hmm. if they need to slow down and practice kicking, you can do that too. Mm -hmm. So we're doing that. We're also, one thing with SNAP is a lot of the children in town that are on IEPs are not, um, they don't need a specialized program necessarily, but they could do town sports with a little extra support mm -hmm. or extra support for their oh. coaches. So one thing we are doing in the spring is working with Hingham Little League to integrate our kids into their program with mentors and maybe a little extra coach training. Mm -hmm. And then also with Firebolt's track. So we'll be oh, integrating okay. them into that too. Yeah. So yeah, we have a lot going on. So Warren mentioned the mentors who yeah. are high school students for the most part. And, um, and what, what does that bring? What that component of having high school students working with younger students um, um, That's and, and mentoring them and helping them and so on? What is, what is that component? of the program bring to it, do you think, for kids? That has been amazing. Uh, our mentors are great. A, a lot of them have siblings or close family connections okay. with special mm -hmm. needs, but a lot don't. They're there because their friends brought them into the program. And they have just been, it's, it's a wonderful group of kids. They are open and they're patient and they're willing to learn. And uh, as you said earlier, a lot of times they get as much or more out of it as our kids do. They've, mm -hmm. um, and it's been nice for our kids because a lot of them, they don't want, necessarily a special needs sport. They, they like being able to play with high school kids. Mm -hmm. And 
So, um, so that's been great. Just to have like there's, you have a child who maybe can't do town soccer, mm -hmm. but loves being a, a, able to get out there and learn some tricks from mm -hmm. somebody who's on the soccer team, and exactly. it's just been a wonderful thing. And as the, hearing about the high school kids sitting, the rowing kids sitting with the mentors, and they really get to know each other. Mm -hmm. And I know my children. Every time we run into one of the high school mentors around town, they just get so excited. <laughs> yeah, the heroes, probably. <laughs> yes, exactly. Eyes yeah. of the younger yes. children. No, it's been the best thing. <laughs> what do you hear uh, feedback? What kind of feedback do you hear from parents about what this has meant uh, to, to to their children and their families? Uh, and Honestly, there have been a lot of tears <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because it, if it, our friends who have typical children, a lot of your friendships are forged on the, on the sidelines. Of That's the right. I hadn't thought of that. Right, exactly. and, or in a waiting yeah. room outside of mm -hmm. piano lessons. And mm -hmm. it's just been so great for the kids to get to know each other and to know the high school mentors, but also for us to get to know each other, too. I mean, it, and to know the wonderful coaches that are donating their time to mm -hmm. develop the program. So it's just been great as parents. Mm -hmm. So was there any unanticipated benefit that uh, kind of the same question I asked Warren about, uh, you know, so you had this thought in your mind and now it's a reality and so is there anything that w you never even thought would be a uh, result of this, this program? I think probably that parent community that's developed, mm -hmm. as well as uh, again the, the coaches and the mentors who like just, I feel like it's really brought the community together and they know our kids and have gotten to know and the coaches and mentors are really appreciating what they have to bring because they're great kids and mm -hmm. they have a lot to teach us mm -hmm. and as parents we know that but it's so nice to see um, people in the community acknowledging that and realizing that and it's just it's been terrific it's I think it's been good for the whole community. Uh, Warren are you aware of anything like this uh, any in any communities nearby? Um, you know what I, cause I, this I is this is called so Shore snap. It is so right, Shore so. snap um, uh, it's interesting. I, I did a lot of work uh, at the beginning of this when it was when I was still at uh, the Ham Sports Partnership, and I should also mention too that the Ham Sports Partnership not only allowed me to go and do this, but also uh, helped fund us mm -hmm. um, to begin with. So uh, we again another partner that mm -hmm. we, we want to mention. Absolutely. Um, but um, I, I looked for pro for programs that. Um, were geared for special needs uh, kids and found single programs, a soccer program mm -hmm. here, um, you know, perhaps a, a tennis program here, a swimming program there, but didn't find an integrated um, resource that, that we could model. Mm -hmm. um, so we made a, our own model uh, and we <laughs> developed our own. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think it's working now because the community's, um, you know, helping us make that work. I think what Carrie was saying earlier too, one of the, the real benefits that, that we see is that the kids are not just um, just taking part in the activities, they are, they're actually part of that individual community so that um, the crew uh, program have uh, a year-end banquet. Mm -hmm. Well, our SNAP group is part of their year-end banquet mm -hmm. and receives the trophies and awards Oh, at the great. end yeah. of the the banquet, um, and they they probably get um, you know the the crew did very well this mm -hmm. year, um, but the loudest applause at the banquet were for the <laughs> crew, for the snap kids That's and true. crew, right. um, which is a testament to uh, to them in the way that they worked with our kids. Great. Okay. Well, I want to thank you both for being here, but more importantly for what you're doing uh, in this community and. Uh, and, and again, it's uh, I mentioned in the other segment, it's all about access and providing access to, to the richness of our community. And, and there's a lot here to everyone. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the most important thing for me is providing access. And you've done that and congratulations for, thank you for your work. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I'd like to. Dr. Gell, yeah, if I sure. don't mind if I mention one more thing. Sure. Um, it is named South Shore SNAP for mm -hmm. a reason. Um, this year we have actually opened up our SNAP programs to um, Hull, Cohasset, Norwell, and Hanover. Terrific. Um, so we have more kids that are coming in. The goal would be is to bring them in, get a group of liaisons from those towns, train them so that they could have their own program, their own board, exactly. and run it by right. themselves. Right. That's wonderful. Thank you. 
And I'd like to thank our audience for uh, tuning in today. Uh, remember, you're going to be seeing some of the uh, students involved in these SNAP activities as you're uh, watching this. Um, and I thank Kerry for uh, doing the taping that has allowed that to happen. So um, I'll be back uh, for some future episodes. Uh, we are look forward to uh, having one episode that will focus on our school resource officers and in particular on some security enhancements that we're working on thanks to some state uh, funding for such uh, a project. And also, uh, we're hoping to have uh, a segment that um, focuses on our foreign language program, particularly uh, at the elementary level. So thank you for tuning in. Until next time, I'm Dorothy Gallo, Superintendent of Schools.